All right, what's going on guys? It's Epoxy and here in this video we'll be going through everything we saw and learned about Stalker 2 thanks to the Xbox showcase the other day. A lot of people are unaware that we've actually gotten a good amount of info alongside the release of the, in my opinion, perfect official trailer. But to be a little more specific, we got a load of new details on what we can actually expect from the game. Not just the beautiful in-engine trailer. So without further ado, let's talk about that. Now, let's start with a brief rundown for those of you that don't know what Stalker 2 is or let alone the Stalker franchise, as I don't typically cover many other games here on the channel other than Cyberpunk at the moment, so not all of you may know about Stalker. It's also not the most popular franchise out there, but it's got a very strong following. So Stalker is a series of first person shooter survival horror games. There have been three official games so far set in a alternate history of the Chernobyl disaster site, also known as The Zone, developed by Ukrainian developer GSC Game World. It is what one would expect from post-apocalyptic games, with a radiated wasteland filled with mutated creatures, stalkers, which stands for scavengers, trespassers, adventurers, loners, killers, explorers, and robbers, and what are known as anomalies. To clarify, Stalker isn't seen as an RPG. It is more of just an open world first person shooter with limited dialogue options. It's more focused on the world itself rather than building up your character. So while the setting has similarity to that of the Fallout series, Stalker is its unique Thing. Now, one of the things that I think held this game back from being even more of a success is that the past games have only ever launched on Windows, as at the time of release, these games were niche and not very popular in the West, for example. That being said, it was still an award-winning PC franchise. Over time, though, these games have grown even more in popularity thanks to the strong and passionate community, and of course, the strong mod support that has kept the games fresh for many players. Keep in mind, these games came out over a decade ago, and they are still being played to this day. Now, the developer's GSC game world has quite the rocky background, though. In fact, after Stalker SoC, that being the first game in the series, Shadow of Chernobyl, many a part of the core team left and formed 4A Games, the studio behind the Metro series. So that left GSC in an odd place. In 2009, after the launch of Stalker COP, Call of Pripyat, GSC began the development on Stalker 2. I think you can see where this is going. During Stalker 2's development, layoffs saw the company shrink from 200 employees to 50. That's a big deal when you consider the fact that this had previously been the largest developer in all of Eastern Europe. In December 2011, GSC was dissolved, with formal cancellation of Stalker 2 following that in April 2012. GSC was left as merely a shell corporation to oversee the ownership of the franchise, but was no longer an active developer. However, December 2014 is where things start looking up for GSC, as GSC reopened and announced that it was working on a new game. The company announced Cossacks 3 in May 2015, a remake of the first Cossacks game, including, in quotes, all its original gameplay. The game was released on September 20th, 2016, and then in May 2018, GSC re-announced Stalker 2 with a proposed release in 2018. 21, which I even made a video on. To be clear, the game is no longer slated for 2021, but we'll discuss that in a moment. It had been over two years since the re-announcement of Stalker 2 with no real updates, but it looks like it was well worth the wait as the Stalker 2 trailer dropped during the Xbox Game Showcase and it got people hyped. The trailer on Xbox's official YouTube channel is rocking more views than the Halo Infinite trailers. The only exception to that is the 8-minute gameplay demo on the official Halo YouTube channel. So I think it's pretty clear people are excited for this game. While I myself have not actually sat down to play these games, that's the case for the majority of my Steam library, and these games also came out back in the days where I didn't even have a PC. But here's why I am very interested in Stalker. To put it simply, Stalker fits my liking almost perfectly. Perfectly. Post apocalyptic vibes, open world, shooter, dialogue options, unforgiving gameplay, and modding to freshen up additional playthroughs. So, I actually do plan on playing them sometime in the coming weeks. Which, by the way, if you would be interested in a series on that, 
let me know down in the comment section below. But the Stalker 2 trailer specifically caught my eye because of how rock solid the atmosphere was. From the visuals, to the music, to the sound effects, it all came together to create an exceptional trailer that gets you hyped to see more. It is what CGI trailers should turn into, and that be an in-engine look at what they're going for with the game, in terms of the actual atmosphere, but also the graphics. Not a CGI trailer, that is an unrealistic level of graphical fidelity. What we saw from the Stalker 2 trailer is something that is achievable on next gen, and that's what is really exciting. So with all that said, what can you actually expect from Stalker 2. Well, we've gotten a load of new info on the game thanks to the official Stalker 2 website, FAQ. And I think, of course, we should begin with what is Stalker 2? It's a unique blend of FPS, immersive sim, and horror with a really thick atmosphere. One of the biggest open worlds to date is yours to explore, along with an epic branching story with multiple endings. That's right there, is big talk from a studio that hasn't been known for making large-scaled games for over a decade. But they took it even further in their answer for if Stalker 2 is indeed an open-world game, where they said, The zone in Stalker 2 is one of the biggest, seamless, open worlds to date. And if they can pull that off, that is mind-blowing. Because again, they're claiming this is one of the biggest open worlds to date in a world where GTA 5's Los Santos exists. So whether they're comparing it to massive quadruple A games of ridiculous scale like that, or more in the vein of games like Fallout 4's Commonwealth is yet to be seen. But either way, it will be a large game world for us to explore. And if it could be anywhere near the graphical fidelity of what we saw in the in-engine trailer, this world is going to be beautiful. They also got a bit more specific on the story, saying the game will feature an epic non-linear story and your choices will influence both short-term consequences and global outcomes. Now, Stalker has always had a non-linear storyline and multiple endings, so this doesn't come as much of a surprise, but it will be interesting to see what scale this is taken to in-game, especially seeing as this is a decade beyond that of the original Stalker games, which already featured those things. So I question if this is going to be more in the vein of something like Fallout New Vegas in terms of just a simple branching storyline, or if it will be something like that of the original games where it's a bit more complex and a bit more randomized, I guess you could say. Cyberpunk 2077 is a great example of a game that is more complex with its heavy focus on consequences, branching storyline, and multiple outcomes. So it'll be interesting to see what direction they go with this. And for those of you that are worried about having to beat the previous games to enjoy Stalker 2, here's what GSC said on whether playing the previous games is going to be essential. Stalker 2 is a standalone project that can be enjoyed on its own. At the same time, we recommend to complete the previous games for the maximum level of immersion. So you don't have to play the previous games to enjoy Stalker 2. It will simply just add upon the experience rather than punish you for not playing those past games. Look at it like the Fallout franchise where the games are in the same world but have completely standalone stories that don't have to be played in order to enjoy. Now, we also got a few details on the world of Stalker 2 itself based on what we saw in the trailer. First off, the location. We now know it will not only take place inside the Chernobyl exclusion zone, but it will host both new locations and old ones that players may be familiar with from previous games. They also touched on the anomaly scene in the trailer, saying it is indeed a new anomaly we will get to learn about in the game. GSC also confirmed that there will of course be new artifacts, mutants, and I'm sure many other things. And that the character at the end of the trailer is a stalker, a hero of the zone. But I'd argue the most important information we learned from all of this is about the trailer and technology being used for the game itself as, although it's not a gameplay trailer, it was an engine, and here's what they claim. The trailer demonstrates the level of graphics and atmosphere we are aiming to achieve on release. And I believe that for a very specific reason. First off, the trailer is in engine, using Unreal Engine. And I'm going to assume that they will upgrade to the Unreal Engine 5 once it's released, possibly unlocking even more potential for this game. To make it even better, actual game models were used to create it. So what you're seeing in the trailer are actual game assets, just the very high quality versions of them. But GSC shared even more on the technical parts of the game's development. 
development. Here is what they had to say. Visuals are critical for the immersion in the world we create. So there are a lot of modern technologies involved. Stalker 2 runs on Unreal Engine, and we use motion capture for both bodies and faces, and photogrammetry to achieve the required levels of realism. Both motion capture and photogrammetry are impressive technologies, with photogrammetry being the more cutting edge of the two. A game that uses photogrammetry just as an example is Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I'm sure many of you know looks very beautiful. We also saw photogrammetry used in the Unreal Engine 5 demo, which looks, well, <laughs> Unreal. Photogrammetry is the technology for scanning real-world objects to automatically make 3D models of them. Now, to be clear, assets still require polishing from artists, but it produces some amazing end results. Photogrammetry is being used more and more often in the industry, and it's usually only in the much larger projects. And as an example, is a technology also confirmed to be in use for the development of The Elder Scrolls 6. It is the tech that is going to push next-gen games to the absolute limits in terms of graphical fidelity. So with all this amazing news, that has to be it, right? Not quite. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the Stalker franchise is well known for modding. Mods kept this franchise alive during the time in which it was dead on an official level for over a decade. So I would have been surprised if mods weren't mentioned by GSC, at least to some extent and at some point. It's actually Actually been mentioned by them twice now, but here's where things get interesting. As I'm going to be completely honest, I was not expecting this statement. GSC Game World has stated in their FAQ that they are fully committed to making modding as simple as possible on day one. Now that is an impressive statement, but to be honest, I'm gonna have to see it to believe it. GSC and Stalker 2 have a load of potential, but this studio has a lot to prove after the absence of anything tangible from them for a long time now. This is not the same studio that it once was. However, their use of the latest technologies, promises of large advancements for the game size and complexity, and being committed to mod support for day one makes all of this sound very promising, but it also makes it sound too good to be true. But here's one thing to note. I don't think Microsoft would have cut a deal with them for Game Pass and console exclusivity if they didn't have something to show them that Microsoft liked. So I think they might actually deliver. Now with all that great info, you might be invested in this game if you weren't already. So you might be wondering now, what platforms is it releasing on? Will you actually be able to play it? And when can you expect it to release? First off, it will have a simultaneous release on PC and Xbox Series X. Soccer 2 will also enter Xbox Game Pass on console on day one. Xbox Game Pass is an insanely good deal, by the way, but I think it's actually smart for GSC to only make that deal available for console. The game honestly needs to be sold at full price on PC, which is where their fan base primarily resides, as they need this game to do well for them financially. That is, if we want them to thrive moving forward. While we don't have an official release date, as of yet, I can assure you that 2021 is most certainly off the table. I know this as they've stripped the mention of a 2021 release date off their website, which was their previous target, and they now have this posted in the FAQ for the release date. We are not ready to disclose the release date just yet. Please follow the official social channels of Stalker 2 to receive development updates. In all honesty, I would expect maybe a 2022 release date, but most likely even later than that, such as 2023. And I know that's going to make some people upset, especially because a lot of people thought it was coming out in 2021. But you have to remember that Microsoft has stated that they don't plan on having any games exclusive to the Xbox Series X for at least two years, as they want to keep support for the Xbox One. But Stalker 2 is already said to be console exclusive to the Xbox Series X, which unless that was decided by GSC themselves, for hardware capability reasons, that means the game is likely a minimum of two years out. I think the announcement of the original 2021 release date was just GSC jumping the gun and before they knew themselves the large scale that Stalker 2 was going to deliver on. And in all honesty, them giving a release date window with the initial announcement was probably a good thing even if they don't meet it, as it ensured people didn't just assume the project was dead during their two years of no real updates. So in the end, Stalker 2 has a low of potential, and not just to be a graphics tech demo for Xbox. What I mean is that it has a load of potential when it comes to being a rock-solid open-world shooter. Based on the trailer, they already have the atmosphere for the game 
down pat. So I have full confidence as of right now that GSC will deliver on Stalker 2. So I'll be keeping my eye on the game and we'll be sure to keep you all updated on Stalker 2 as well. But in the meantime, let me know your thoughts on Stalker 2 or the original games down in the comment section below. But that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below. Subscribe to join the good fight if you haven't already and ring that bell icon to stay updated in all of my future videos. It would be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy signing off.